Hey gang and welcome to your very first React Context and Hooks tutorial. Okay then my friends, so unless you've been living under some kind of rock for the last six months or so, you probably will have heard about React Context and React Hooks. They're the two still relatively new kids on the block in the React scene and they can have a big impact on how we write React applications. So what are they exactly? Well, first of all, the React Context API, that gives us a clean and easy way to share state between different components without having to pass props down all of the time. And React Hooks allow us to do a whole bunch of stuff inside functional components that we can normally only do inside class components. Things like use state or tap into a lifecycle method, kind of. And when we use them together, context and hooks, that is when the magic happens. Together, they're going to help us to create a really nice way to work with shared data inside our application, similar to how Redux behaves, but without having to install a third party library. You might have even heard through the grapevine that context hooks have killed Redux. Now, it's a bit early to be saying that, in my opinion, but they are a killer combination, and I really think you're going to enjoy using them. So before you start this course, I would expect you to know a couple of things. First of all, obviously, I want you to have a pretty good grasp of JavaScript because it's a very JavaScript heavy course. And secondly, you should have a moderate understanding of React and you know how to use the React CLI, creating class or functional components using props and all that kind of jazz. Now, if you don't know any of these, then I've got a link to a full modern JavaScript course on Udemy that I'll leave the link to down below. And also I have a completely free React course as well for beginners. So I'll leave that link down below as well. So in this course, first of all, we're going to learn the basics of the context API and React hooks separately from one another. Then we're going to merge the two together to create this simple reading list application that is also going to work with local storage in the browser as well. Now, I know this is not groundbreaking stuff right here, and it's not going to win any awards for the best design or anything like that, but it is going to give you really good practice using the context API and React hooks together inside an application. So as you can see, we have a list of books which we can delete and that deletes them from local storage as well. And if we add in a book, for example, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson and add that, we can see it right here and it goes to local storage as well. So that if we refresh, we don't lose these books. It grabs them from local storage and shows them on the screen. So we're going to use React Context API and React Hooks together to create this. Now, I have also created course files for every single lesson that uses code in this series, and you can find them at this repo right here, React Context Hooks. So I'll leave the link down below to this. Now, each lesson has a different branch in this repo. So if you want to see the code from lesson nine, for example, select the lesson nine branch, and you're going to see the code right here, okay? So you can download the code by going to the green button over here, clone or download, and download the zip, or just copy this and clone the repo on your computer. Finally, I am going to be using Visual Studio Code for this course. So if you want to follow along exactly the way I'm doing it, then make sure you download this as well. It's code.visualstudio.com that you get this from and just click on the green button to download it. There's also a package for this that I'd like to show you as well. So then inside Visual Studio Code, I'm just going to show you this package that I've already installed. So go to extensions and it's called Simple React Snippets. So this is one of many packages you can install for VS Code that's going to help with React. And if we just scroll down here, you can see we can use shortcuts to quickly create different things inside React, like class components or functional components. So I'll be using this as we go along. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is actually create a simple project using the React CLI. So I'm going to open up my terminal at the bottom and let me just clear this. For some reason, it never shows this path when I first open it. But anyway, I'm going to use npx, first of all, then create hyphen react hyphen app. And we're going to create an app called context app and just hit enter. OK, then, so now that's installed, we can go ahead and CD into context app into this directory and then say npm start to spin up the local dev server so we can view it in a browser. So I'm just going to clear the console first of all. Then I'm going to say cd context 
app to go into this new project folder that we created. Then I'm going to say npm start to start the project and view it in a browser over here. So hopefully that should open up in a browser and we should see that in a second. There we go. So this is the dummy application that React boilerplates for us. But we don't want to start off with this. We want to start off with something a bit simpler. So I'm just going to edit this a little bit go into the source folder. And again, I would expect you to understand everything I'm doing here. If you don't, then I think you should start with the React for Beginners course. And again, that link is going to be down below. So anyway, first of all, I'm going to get rid of a few files so it's not so overwhelming in here. I'll get rid of the test file. We won't be using that. And also the logo. We don't need that. We'll get rid of app.css as well, just because I'm going to keep it simple and put all of the CSS eventually inside this file right here. So app.js, that is the root component we can see. And we don't need this app.css or logo imports anymore. We still need React at the top. And inside, we'll just delete most of this right here because we don't want all of that. We'll keep the surrounding div with a class of app. So we'll save that. Then I'm just going to create a couple of different components. So right click new folder to keep these in and I'm going to call it components like so. And then we'll create two components. We'll create one for some kind of nav bar and one for some kind of book list. So let me now say new file and call this navbar.js. And we're going to flesh this out first of all. So first of all, we want to import React. So I'm going to say IMR to import React. We also want to import components as well because we're going to use a class component inside this. And then I'm going to use the snippet CC to create a class component, then press tab and it creates this boilerplate for me. Now I'm going to call this navbar and then we don't need any state at the minute. So let's get rid of that. And inside the return statement down here, we just want to return a simple template for now. So let's do a nav. And inside this nav, we'll do an H1 first of all. And we'll just call this context app because we're going to look at the context first of all. And then underneath the H1, we're going to say UL. And we'll just throw in a few LI tags as well. I'm just going to duplicate this a couple of times. I'm going to imagine these are links at the top of the page, like a nav bar. They're not going to go anywhere. I'm just putting them there for visual effect, just so we've got some content to work with. So about and contact. And that's the reason I'm creating this little dummy application, by the way, just so we've got some kind of working template or application to work with when we start to learn about the context app. So I'm just creating a couple of different components to work with as we go forward. So that's pretty much the navbar sorted. We export it down here at the bottom. So now we'll go to app.js and we're going to nest that inside the app div right here. So navbar, well, like so. And if I go down here, it's going to auto import it for me at the top. That's nice. So let me close that off. Now we're nesting the nav bar inside the app. So if I save and preview in a browser, okay, we see that looks pretty cruddy, but it's there. So let's do one more component, new file, and we'll call this book list.js. And again, this is going to be a class component. So let me import React and also see that gets us the component as well. So now let me say CC to do another class component. And this one is going to be called book list. And again, we're not going to use state just yet. And inside the template, all I'm going to do is a div, first of all, with a class name equal to book list, like so. And inside the div, all we're going to do is a UL. And inside that, some LI tags. These are just going to be different books. So let me just duplicate this a couple of times. And first of all, we'll say The Way of Kings. It's a Brandon Sanderson book, really good. Uh, the Name of the Wind, even better. And then finally, uh, The Final Empire. Okay, cool. So we've got three books there now, and we've done this component as well. So now let me save that and import it into app.js again. So underneath the navbar, we'll do book list. It's going to auto import it for me at the top, which is nice. And Let's save that. So if we save this now and go to the browser, we can see those as well. So both of these components are showing now on the page. Now there's one more thing I'd like to do, and that is just to add in a little bit of CSS, just so that this thing over here doesn't look so cruddy all the time. So like I said, all the CSS is going to go into this index.css file right here. 
So if we go over here, first of all, I'm going to get rid of this because we won't be using that rule at all. Then I'm just going to paste in a few styles that have come from my GitHub repo on the lesson one branch. So you can grab them from there if you want to. I'll quickly talk you through these. So first of all, the app class, which is inside here, right? We're saying that should have a max width of 400 pixels then a margin 30 pixels top and bottom, auto left and right, and text align center. So this is just putting this in the middle of the page with a max width and causing all the text to be in the center. Uh, the nav, which is inside nav bar right here, that is gonna have a padding of five pixels all the way around. The UL inside the nav, we're stripping out the padding because it gets that automatically from a browser using default styles. Then the li tags inside the nav, we're going to display it as inline blocks so they go left to right instead of top to bottom and give them a margin left and right of 10 pixels, zero top and bottom. The book list, which is inside this other component right here, we're saying we want a padding of 20 pixels all the way around, a margin bottom of 20 pixels as well. The UL inside that book list, zero padding, stripping out the default styles and a list style type of none, meaning that we won't see these little dots right here. And then down here, the LIs inside that book list, we're saying padding 10 pixels all the way around, margin 10 pixels top and bottom, auto left and right, and a border radius of 10 pixels as well. So that will come in handy later on when we start to colorize these a bit more. So let me save this and preview. Okay, so it's still not looking great, but at least it's semi-respectable now. So there we go. This is kind of like the dummy application to get us up and running with React. And now starting in the next tutorial, we're going to dive right in to the context API.